Why did you drive like that, you fool? We might have been killed. Worse than that, monsieur. We might have been caught. Caught? By whom? Those men you spoke to? They are not men, monsieur. They are dead bodies. Dead? Yes, monsieur. Zombies. The living dead. Corpses taken from their graves. Were made to work. The sugar mill. The fields. Excuse me, please. <laughs> Have you got a match? 
Uh, did I frighten you? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm ugly enough, I suppose. Oh, no, it wasn't you. Something happened back on the road there. We uh, stopped to speak to some men. Our driver told us they weren't men at all. He said they were corpses. Surely you don't believe it, do you? No. <laughs> I don't know. Katie is full of nonsense and superstition. They're always mixed up with a lot of mysteries that turn your hair gray. I've been a missionary here for, oh, 30 years. And at times, I don't know what to think. Come, let's go in the house. Oh, yes. Huh? Come, then. Is, uh, is Mr. Beaumont in? You're expected, Dr. Bruner. <laughs> yes, I, I've been sent for to marry someone. <laughs> Maybe here. <yeah. laughs> oh, yes, excuse me. Uh, it's, uh, how long is it that you know Mr. Beaumont? Oh, only a few days. Uh, Madeline introduced him on the docks in Port-au-Prince. Oh, uh, and you? I met him on the ship coming from New York. He was very kind during the voyage. Oh, Madeline and I planned to be married the moment she arrived. But Mr. Beaumont persuaded us to come here. He promised to take me out of the bank at Port-au-Prince and send me to New York as his agent. Hmm. Strange. Very strange. You... I'll tell Mr. Beaumont you're here. Yeah. It's all right, isn't it, Doctor? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> you see, I... I've only met Mr. Beaumont once or twice. <laughs> but... <laughs> but he never struck me like a man that would take the trouble to play a fairy godfather to a young couple like you. Unless... Unless what, sir? <sighs> I suppose you'll think I'm a meddling old fool, but... You know, I'd feel a good deal better if you'd clear out of this place after you're married and have nothing more to do with Mr. Bowman. The young people have arrived, sir, and Dr. Bruner. They're waiting in the reception hall. Show them to their room and tell them I'm out. Yes. No, wait. Perhaps I'd better see them. It might look odd if I didn't. Very odd, sir. Especially as Dr. Bruner is a trifle skeptical as to your motives, sir. Never mind my motives. Has that other person sent word yet? No, sir, not yet. He's 24 hours late. I wish you'd keep away from that man, sir. He'll make trouble for you. You needn't worry about that. I'm not afraid of him. I'm not easily frightened, sir. You should know that. But what you're planning is dangerous. Don't you suppose I know that, Silver? You don't seem to realize what this girl means to me. Why, I'd sacrifice anything I have in the world for her. Nothing matters if I can't have her. I think, uh, I think you like Haiti. Uh, most people that... Oh, Madeline, I'm delighted to see you. Neil, you're more than welcome. Thank you, sir. Doctor, it was very kind of you to come. I know what a busy man you are. No, no, not at all. There's a, there's a native family live out here that I've been trying to see for a long time. After this young couple are safely married, <laughs> I'll leave. But surely you'll stay for dinner after the ceremony. No, no, no. No, I must run along. Well, that's a great pity. We had something very special prepared for this occasion. It was very good of you, Madeline, to humor the whim of a lonely man. There was so little time to prepare. I couldn't do half the things I want to do for you. You've, you've done more than enough already, Mr. Beaumont. If 
for a comparison, giving Neil a position in the state. Neil? Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sure Neil will make a very good agent. But you must be tired after your drive. You'll get some rest. Silver. Silver will show you to your rooms. This way, please. to see you again, Monsieur Beaumont. I have been on a journey, seeking men for my milk. Men? They work faithfully. They are not worried about long hours. You, you could make good use of men like mine on your plantation. No. That's not what I want. Then perhaps you wish to talk about the young lady who came to your house this evening. You've seen her? Where? On the road tonight.
There was a young man. They're to be married tonight. You've waited too long to do anything. What do you want me to do? If she were to disappear for a month, what do you hope to gain by her disappearance? Everything. Everything. Do you think she will forget her lover in a month? Just give me a month. One little month. Not in a month. Not even a year. I have looked into your eyes. She is deep in love. But not with you. Let her be married within an hour. There must be a way. There is a way. The cost. The cost is heavy. You give me what I want, and you may ask anything. A flower. Ah, take it. The time is very brief. You must do your share if I am to help you. Keep it, monsieur. Keep it. You may change your mind. Send me word when you use it. I'll find another way. There is. Even yet, dear, I can make you the envy of every woman. I'll give my life to make you happy. Oh, listen to me, dear, before it's too late. Don't. Please. Don't go into that room. We can be in Port of in half an hour. There's a boat sailing at midnight. And... You've been so wonderful. Don't spoil everything. Now. One last gift before I lose you forever.
We are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man, this woman, in holy matrimony. Faith. to the bride.
Zombies. Yes. They are my servants. Did you think we could do it alone? In their lifetime, they were my enemies. I go the witch doctor. Once my master. Secrets I tortured out of him. Van Gelder, the swine, swollen with riches. He fought against my spells until the last. Him, yes, I have trouble, Heinrich. His Excellency Richard, once Minister of the Interior. Garcia, brigand chief. Marquis, captain of gendarmerie. And this, this is Chauvin. The high executioner. Who almost executed me. I took them. Just as we will take this one. But what if they regain their souls? They will tear me to pieces. And that, my friend, shall never be. Thank you. 
there's two explanations that strike me. Either the body was stolen by members of a death cult that use human bones in their ceremonies, or else... Or else what? She's not dead. Not dead? Are you mad? I saw her die. The doctor signed the certificate. I saw them bury her. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not mad. But I've lived in these islands for a good many years. And I've seen things with my eyes that made me think I was crazy. There's superstitions in Haiti that the natives brought here from Africa. Some of them can be traced back as far as ancient Egypt. And beyond that yet, in the countries that was old when Egypt was young. Yes, but what has that to do with Madeline? I kissed her as she lay there in the coffin. And her lips were cold. Let me explain. Now, just a minute. I'll explain. Wherever there is a superstition, you will find there is also a practice. Now, do you remember what your driver told you the night he took you to Beaumont's house? Oh, about those horrible creatures we saw. Yeah. He said they were corpses, yeah. taken from their grave. That's it. Now, wait. Now, that's the superstition. Now, for the practice. The ghouls that steal the dead corpses from the graves are supposed to put them there in the first place. Do you mean that Madeline was murdered so that somebody could steal her dead body? Ah, nonsense. No, no. Not her, not her, her body, yes, but not her dead body. That's what I mean. Well, surely you don't think she's alive? in the hands of natives. Oh, no, better dead than that. Uh, excuse me, please. Have you got a match? Thank you. <clears throat> you don't believe that, do you? Say, there's been lots of people that's been pronounced dead that came alive again and lived for years. Now, that's... If nature can play pranks like that, why isn't it possible to play pranks with nature? Oh, I don't know. Your driver believed he saw dead men walking. He didn't. What he saw was men alive in everything but this and this. Oh, the whole thing has me confused. I just can't understand it. Uh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I've been trying for years to get to the bottom of this thing. To separate what you call fact from fiction. The law. The law of Haiti acknowledges the possibility of being buried alive. Here it is in the penal code. I'll read it for you. It's in French. Do you speak French? No. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Have you got a match? Right here. Here's one. Oh, thanks. I didn't see it. <coughs> I'll translate it for you, if you should fit it. Article, Article 149. The use, the use of drugs or other practices which produce lethargic coma or lifeless sleep shall be considered attempted murder. Yes. Attempted. Yes, I see. Yeah, all right, all right. If the person has been buried alive, the act should be considered murder, no matter what result follows. Beaumont. Say, you said that you couldn't understand why he was so interested in us. Do you think he did this? No. No, I think it's native work. Native work, exactly. Of course, if you want to, we can go to Beaumont's house first. If I can get my hands on the devil that's responsible for this, and make him such an example that every rich doctor in Haiti will be shaken in his sandals. But we can't do this alone. Can't the authorities help? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Neil, my boy. You don't know these islands. The native authorities are afraid to meddle. I'm not. I got friends among the natives. They'll tell me things that no gendarme could ever get out of. Because I'm a preacher. They think I'm a magician. Before we get through with this thing, we may uncover sins 
that even the devil would be ashamed of. Oh, these bitch doctors. They can't bring back the light to those eyes. I was mad to do this. But if you'd have smiled on me, I'd have done anything for you, given you anything. I thought that beauty alone would satisfy. But the soul is gone. I can't bear those empty, staring eyes. Oh, forgive me, Madeline, forgive me. I can't bear it any longer. I must take you back. Back to the grave, monsieur? No. You must put the light back into her eyes and bring laughter to her lips. She must be gay and happy again. You paint a charming picture, monsieur. One that I should like to see myself. You must bring her back. Aren't you trifling? Monsieur, how do you suppose those eyes will regard you when the brain is able to understand? Better to see hatred in them than that dreadful emptiness. Perhaps you're right. It would be a pity to destroy such a lovely love. Let's drink to the future of this flower. A glass of wine? Silver, bring wine. 
We have a toast to drink. The future, Monsieur. Only a pinpoint, Monsieur, in a cloud, or perhaps a glass of wine. What are you trying to do to me? I have other plans for Mademoiselle. And I'm afraid you might not agree. I have taken a fancy to you, Monsieur. Silver! Silver! <laughs> Young man, 
Just as old Pierre said, a cloud of vultures always hovers over the house of the living dead. Madeline, is she there? No. Oh, I must go and see. No, 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 no. Neil, my boy. Please, please, lie down and rest. Please. You'll feel stronger in the morning. You right. Let me go up and see what I can do.
Can you still hear me? It is unfortunate you are no longer able to speak. I should be interested to hear you describe your symptoms. See, you are the first man to know what is happening. None of the others did. You refused to shake hands once, I remember. Well, well. We understand each other better now.
Madeline. Madeline. I found you. You're alive. Alive. What's the matter? It's I, Neil. Oh, my darling. What have they done to you? You know me, dear. It's Neil. I could swear. For a moment, she recognized you. Come on, don't let him get away. Excuse me, please. <laughs> Have you got a match? <laughs> <laughs> 